Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome to the second lecture of module 3 of the course called Game Theory and Economics. Uh, before we start this uh, lecture, let me just take you through what we have covered in this uh, module so far in the first lecture. We have discussed, we have been discussing uh, application of game theory and application of Nash equilibrium in particular in various situations. So, we have started out with uh, application of Nash equilibrium in case of markets in oligopoly markets and this market that we are discussing right now is uh, called the Kurno model. Uh, so, in Kurno model the, the number of firms that there are in the market they are not a large there are not a large number of firms. Uh, however, the number of firms is not uh, one also. So, it is a few number of firms are there and that is called an oligopoly market. What these firms are doing is that they are trying to maximize their profits and uh, the decision variables that is the variables that they are choosing uh, are their respective output levels. So, by choosing their output levels um, they are trying to maximize their profit. And now, the point is that how is the price determined in such market? Uh, what happens is that after all the firms have chosen their quantities that is the output levels uh, they are sold to the market and uh, they if they have to be sold then the price has to be of a certain amount and that price will guarantee that all the goods produced by the firms are getting sold. It is not that the amount that they are producing is more than what the consumers are do demanding because there is another side to the market which is uh, formed by the consumers. So, the price in the market is determined where the demand is just equal to the supply. Uh, so, that is how price is determined, price is not determined by the producers, it is determined by the market condition at the point where demand is equal to supply. So, that is the story more or less the basic story. We have started out with uh, how to apply the concept of Nash equilibrium in such a market. <coughs> we said that for the time being let us take a simple case where there are two firms only and these two firms <coughs> face the demand function in the market given by Q is equal to alpha minus P if P is less than equal to alpha equal to 0 if P is greater than alpha and this is the direct demand function uh, and from this we can get the inverse demand function which is this and this So, these are the inverse demand functions. Uh, what about the cost function of the producers? We have assumed that cost of a producer is given by the unit cost is small q small p multiplied by q i uh, and this is for both the firms. So, they both the firms have the same unit cost of production. From this uh, we have tried to find out what are the best response functions because in Nash equilibrium one way to find out the Nash equilibrium is to try to find the best response functions and from the best response functions uh, what is the Nash equilibrium because uh, one property that we have seen before is that uh, at the point where the best response functions intersect with each other 
that is also the point of Nash equilibrium. So, here also we are going to do the same, we are going to find the best response functions and uh, try to find the point of intersection. And in the last lecture that is what we have been doing, we have found that the best response function of form 1 is uh, q 1 alpha minus c minus q 2 divided by 2 if q 2 is less than equal to alpha minus c is equal to 0 if q 2 is strictly greater than alpha minus c. This is what we have seen before and uh, by applying the same method that this we got by maximizing the profit function of firm 1. Uh, we got this this function, this best response function of firm 1. Uh, similarly, if we maximize firm 2's best uh, profit function, which will be again a function of q1 and q2, we can get uh, with respect to q2, we can get the best response function of player 2 that is firm 2. It will be given by q2 if and So, these two are the best response functions of player 1 and player 2 that is firm 1 and firm 2. What is the Nash equilibrium? <coughs> so, Nash equilibrium will be given by uh, that point where these two functions intersect. Uh, can we represent these two functions in, ter in terms of diagram? Uh, it turns out that we can. Suppose we draw this diagram. And we want to draw the best response function of firm 1 suppose. Now, firm 1's best response function is given by now uh, and is equal to 0 if q2 is greater than alpha minus c. So, let us suppose this is alpha minus c and uh, this is also alpha minus c and this is suppose alpha minus c divided by 2. If q 2 is greater than alpha minus c, uh, sorry q 2 is less than alpha minus c, then this becomes operative, this becomes operative uh, and how does this uh, look like? If q2 is equal to 0, q1 is equal to alpha minus c divided by divided by 2, which means this function, this curve is going to start from here, and we can see that it is a straight line curve, uh, it, 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 it is not a quadratic or, or a function of higher order. So, the diagrammatic representation will be a straight line. Uh, if q2 is equal to 0, q1 is equal to alpha minus c divided by 2. If q1 is equal to 0, then q2 is equal to alpha minus c, which means this point on q2 axis and this point on the q1 axis are two points on the best response function. So, I can join them. So, this is b1. Uh, so, this is this part is for q2 less than equal to alpha minus c. 
if q 2 is greater than alpha minus c then q 1 is 0 which means we are talking about the axis itself q 2 axis itself. So, this is my b 1. Uh, so, it consists of two parts one is the downward sloping part which is after alpha minus c and another is vertical part which is uh, over the point alpha minus c. Uh, what about the representation of q uh, 2 is equal to p 2 which is a function of q 1. So, let us first write it down. So, um, again this is a straight line and what are the points on the straight line? If q 1 is equal to 0, then q 2 is equal to alpha minus c divided by 2, which means this point is on the curve or on the uh, base response function. If uh, q 2 is equal to 0, then q 1 is equal to alpha minus c. So, this point is again on the function, this response function. So, I can join them. And if q 1 is greater than alpha minus c, then q 2 is equal to 0, which means that I am getting this axis itself, the horizontal axis itself which means that uh, this b 2 is cutting this b 1 at only one point, this is the point, this is the point of intersection. Let us call it uh, q 1 star, q 2 star, q 1 star, q 2 star is the Nash equilibrium because that is the point of intersection. But we have to find out what is the value of q1, q1 star and q2 star. We have to find out the coordinates. So to do that, uh, we have to solve these two equations. One is q1 star is equal to alpha minus c minus q2 star divided by two. The other is q2 star. These two functions we have to. Uh, these two equations we have to solve simultaneously and if we do that then what we get is the following So, this is sorry, this is 3 divided by 4, which means q1 star is equal to alpha minus c divided by 3, which means uh, q2 star
which is nothing but uh, one third of alpha minus c one. So, uh, so both this uh, output levels that is Nash equilibrium output levels alpha minus c divided by 3 alpha minus c divided by 3. They are producing the same level of output and which is not surprising because their cost functions are same and they are facing the same demand function. So, there is no difference between these uh, two firms uh, conditions that is why in equilibrium they are producing the same level of output. What is the total output? Suppose Q star is the total market output in equilibrium. So, this is Q 1 star plus Q 2 star which means 2 divided by 3 alpha minus c and price the equilibrium price uh, price formula is that it is alpha minus q. So, alpha minus q alpha plus 2 c and what about the profit equilibrium profit it is given by suppose q 1 star so, this profit will be the same because they are producing the same level of output. Uh, it is given by the price in equilibrium or we can use the, the result that we had derived before the profit function which is Q star minus multiplied by alpha minus C multi minus Q 2 star minus q 1 star square. So, this was the profit function that we have derived before. Uh, so, it will be I can take q 1 star common. So, alpha minus c minus q 1 minus q 2 and what is alpha this is alpha minus c divided by 3 alpha minus c minus 2 by 3 alpha minus c because there are 2 alpha minus c's. <coughs> so, this is nothing but alpha minus c divided by 3. So, this is alpha minus c whole square divided by 9. So, this is the equilibrium profit of each firm. Now, uh, remember when we started out uh, with this uh, analysis of Kurno equilibrium, we said what are the main purposes of studying Kurno equilibrium or any market for example. We want to find out what is the equilibrium quantity and price that we have found out. But what we get from here is what will be the effects of various parameters on uh, the equilibrium price and output. For example, uh, suppose in the market uh, demand conditions improve, uh, demand curve uh, shifts to the right. Uh, what is meant by demand curve shifting to the right? I can show it in terms of diagram. So, demand function is given the in, rather the inverse demand function is given by this. Uh, this is for Q less than alpha. Now, 
so demand curve is given by this downward sloping line. When demand curve shifts to the right, that means this intercept is rising. And what is the intercept? Intercept is alpha. So, alpha rising means that demand is rising. All right. So, uh, this alpha parameter captures the <coughs> position of the demand curve. If consumers are willing to buy more goods, uh, that will be represented in terms of rising, uh, rising uh, alpha. <coughs> so, can we look at how alpha is affecting each of these equilibrium variables and the answer is yes. Uh, we have the following results that q 1 star is equal to q 2 star is equal to 1 by 3 alpha minus c p star is given by alpha plus 2 c divided by 3 and the profit equilibrium profit is given by alpha minus c divided by 9 this whole square and capital Q square star that is total output is alpha minus c multiplied by 2 divided by 3. Now, this we know. So, it means that if alpha rises all these variables, all these equilibrium uh, uh, variables that is q 1 star, q 2 star, capital Q star, P star, uh, profit that is pi star, everything is going to rise. Uh, why this is happening is that if people are trying to buy more goods, demand is rising, then uh, all the firms will start producing more good, which means q 1 star and q 2 star will rise in equilibrium, uh, which will push up the total market output, which is capital Q star that will rise. And uh, what will be the effect on price? Well, price we see that P star uh, is, a, is increasing in alpha, which means that if more demand is generated in the market, price is going to rise, which is not very surprising. If people are uh, ready to pay more. Uh, in the market, uh, the price are likely to rise. Uh, and uh, profit earned by the firms that also shows improvement because pi 1 star and pi, pi 2 star are rising in, in alpha. <coughs> so, all these things are rising. What about C, the effect of C? Now, C it is a representation of the unit cost of production. Now, C depends on technology used by a firm, because uh, why I am saying this? Because as technology improves, the cost of production, the unit cost of production of that firm goes down. Uh, so, C goes down as technology improves. Now, how does that affect each of these variables? Uh, we can see that as C declines, uh, Q 1, Q that is called Q i star that improves, uh, because Q i star is a declining function of C. Uh, what about P star? P star declines, pi i star rises, q star rises. And again the, the, the rational is not difficult to find. As technology improves, the firms are ready to produce, are able to produce goods at a cheaper rate. They, they can produce goods at lesser cost. If they produce goods at a lesser cost, they are going to produce more, uh, because the profit uh, margin, the profit that is can be obtained by producing one more good, uh, one more unit of output that is high. 
uh, in that case they are going to produce more that is why q i star is rising p is declining that is profit equilibrium uh, equilibrium price in the market is declining and this is happening because the firms are ready to produce goods at a higher quantity because their cost has gone down and since in the market uh, more supply has been created uh, without any change in demand because alpha is remaining constant here uh, price goes down that is why p star has gone down. The overall effect uh, on profit is positive which means that the firms are earning high profits now uh, than, uh, than they, are, they were earning before uh, because the cost of production has gone down so that is why p i star has gone up. So, these are the basic uh, lessons that we can draw uh, from from this skeletal framework that we have so far constructed. Now, we can uh, talk about some applications or further extensions of the model that we have just seen because if we remember that this model is a very elementary kind of model. Uh, it assumes that the cost of production of the both of both the firms are the same. Now, in real life that is not the case, uh, the firms may be using different technologies. So, their unit cost of production this we had assumed to be C i q i C q i, but it may happen that instead of this it is it can be like this. If that is the case, if cost of production differs across firms. Uh, does the same result that we have seen before hold? The answer is no and that is what we are going to investigate in the next illustration. Suppose two firms are there like before just to keep the story simple. Uh, the demand function as before is a simple linear function that is uh, the inverse demand function alpha minus q and 0 alpha is greater than q alpha is less than q. But uh, here the cost functions are such that uh, the unit cost of production is uh, different for different firms. Uh, and uh, let us suppose C1 is greater than C2 and also alpha is greater than C1 because uh, we have seen that alpha has to be greater than the cost of production otherwise the firms may not produce anything and C2 is greater than 0. So, the cost is positive and the cost unit cost differs uh, for firm 1 and firm 2. In this case what is the equilibrium and uh, more particularly uh, suppose if this is the case then which firms which firm produces more output in equilibrium. So, uh, q 1 star is greater than q 2 star or q 2 star greater than q 1 star or equal. We had the case of equality before. Now, will that remain same or now it will change? So, uh, this is what we are going to investigate. Also, we are investigate suppose uh, q 2 which is already less than q 1 uh, falls, then what is the effect? What effect on equilibrium output for example and price? how the price is going to change or total output.
So, these are the some of the questions that we are going to uh, answer in this little bit more realistic case where the cost of production might differ. Uh, so, like before the, 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 the way to approach this problem is not going to be different from what we have already done. So, uh, we are going to maximize this function profit function of firm 1 and uh, if we do that uh, then what we are maximizing is the following we are maximizing q1 alpha minus c1 minus q1 minus q2 this is what we are maximizing uh, so if we do that then uh, with respect to q1 and then with the the result that we shall get is this is going to be maximized at q1 equal to alpha minus c1 divided by 2 if What we have done is just uh, instead of C which was the common cost of production before we are writing C1 uh, and uh, similarly this is the best response function Q2 that is the best response function of firm 2 will be alpha minus C2 minus Q1 divided by 2 if Q1 is less than equal to alpha minus C to 0 if so these are the best response function and let us see what is the equilibrium in terms of a diagram so if I have to draw firm 1 best firm 1's best response function it is this b1 and this intercept is uh, alpha minus c1 uh, what about firm 2's best response function it is going to be something like this where this intercept is alpha minus c2 uh, now, intentionally I have drawn this intercept alpha minus C2 to be higher than alpha minus C1. The reason is that C2 is less than C1, which means minus C2 is going to be greater than minus C1, which means alpha minus C2 is greater than alpha minus C1. So, this intercept on the horizontal axis is higher than the ax intercept on the vertical axis. And if that is the case, then obviously from the uh, from this illustration at itself, it is found that in equilibrium that is at the point of intersection, uh, Q1 star is going to be less than Q2 star. Uh, so, this is one result which we can at least gauge from this diagram, but is that true? Uh, mathematically that we can uh, verify why because we know that the equilibrium can be found out by solving these two equations if we solve these two equations simultaneously we get the Nash equilibrium and uh, solving them we get the following that q1 is equal to alpha minus c1 divided by 2 minus half of alpha minus c2 
So, this is the equilibrium quantity for firm 1. Uh, if I can substitute this q 1 into the best response function of firm 2 and I can get q 2 equal to alpha minus 2 c 2 plus c 1. So, these are the equilibrium quantities. Uh, from this, uh, can I say that q 1 star less than q 2 star? Uh, well, we can say that for it, why? Because we know that c 2 is less than c 1, which means minus c 2 is greater than minus c 1, which means minus 2 c 2 is going to be greater than minus 2 c 1. So, alpha minus 2 c 2 is going to be greater than and which is going to be greater than uh, alpha minus right because uh, what I am doing is that just replacing C 1 by C 2 and I know C 2 is less than C 1. So, this must be true. So, which means that uh, Q 1 Q 2 star this is Q 2 star is greater than Q 1 star. So, that is what we have found that in equilibrium the firm which has a lower cost of production unit cost of production is going to produce a high level of output than the other firm which has a uh, high cost of production. What happens uh, now this is the case where the firms based response functions are intersecting at a particular point, but remember this is not necessarily the case necessarily the case this situation will occur of intersection will occur. Uh, in a particular condition and that condition is that alpha minus c 1 is greater than alpha minus c 2 divided by 2. That is this part is higher than this part. This higher the bigger part is alpha minus c 1 and this smaller part is alpha minus c 2 divided by 2. So, only if this is true we are going to have this Nash equilibrium of uh, one third of only then we are going to have this uh, Nash equilibrium. If alpha minus C 1 and equal is less than equal to alpha minus C 2 divided by 2, then what is the equilibrium? So, then we are going to have a corner solution here or uh, so it is going to look like this. So, these are the points of equilibrium then on the vertical axis then uh, the Nash equilibrium we are going to have is 0 and uh, the only firm 2 will produce, but how much will the firm 2 produce? Uh, firm 2 will produce 
the amount which is given by its intercept, its vertical intercept, this intercept. And what is that vertical uh, intercept? It is just alpha minus C2 divided by 2. So, in all these cases, the Nash equilibrium, in the Nash equilibrium, the firm 1 is not producing, the firm 2 becomes the monopolist, that is, it is the only producer in the market and the amount of output it produces is given by alpha minus C2 divided by 2. So, this is uh, what is the situation if this condition is satisfied. If this condition is satisfied, both the firms are producing output. Uh, now, what is what about the second part of the question? <coughs> uh, if C2 declines, what is the effect on Q1 star, Q2 star? How do they behave? Now, we know that uh, if uh, we are having this case, the second case, let us call it case 2. Uh, if C2 declines further, uh, then C1 remains same, does not change because it is already 0. What about uh, Q2 star? As C2 declines further, then this value is going to rise. So, Q2 rises as C2 declines. Uh, in case 1, <coughs> as C2 declines, we can see that this is going to fall and this is going to rise. So, as C2 declines, Q1 star falls, Q2 star rises. So, these are the effects on uh, individual output. Uh, what about the price? So, let us look at uh, what will be the price in uh, equilibrium in case 1. In case 1, the price is given by alpha minus Q1 star plus Q2 star and this is alpha minus, I can take 1 by 3 common I do not have to do any further. From there, we can find out what happens if uh, C2 declines. Uh, if C2 declines now, then uh, the effect of C2 on P is going to be positive, that is, P is going to rise. And the reason is the following that as cost of production of firm 2 goes down, firm 2 produces more output, and uh, as a result, price starts to rise, but hold on. Farm 2 produces less output, farm 1, uh, farm one produces less output, farm 2 produces uh, more output and the net effect is that in the market, uh, the price is going to rise. What about the effect on Q total output? It is nothing but the summation of individual outputs, which means it is uh, one third of
which means that if uh, C 2 declines, uh, then Q star is going to rise. Uh, so, the, I was wrong about this effect on P on P that is uh, price equilibrium price. As uh, Q star rises, what happens to price? Price is alpha minus Q. If Q if this Q is rising, so it means that the price is declining as C2 is declining. So, that is uh, how it turns out. In case 2, where only firm 2 produces, and the production is alpha minus C2 divided by 2, and Q1 star is 0 the price uh, sorry the quantity is obviously alpha minus C 2 divided by 2. What about the price? Price is this this much. So, here as C 2 falls Q 2 star is rising, Q 1 star is unchanged. Uh, capital Q star that is total output is going to rise and P is going to decline as uh, C 2 is going to fall. So, uh, the effect is like before that as cost of production of the firm 1 goes or firm 2 goes down that is the firm which was the more efficient firm. Firm 2 was the more efficient firm it is uh, C 2 was less than uh, C 1 that is the cost of production of firm 1. As cost of production of firm 2 declines <coughs> firstly in equilibrium firm 2 produces more output that is irrespective of the case where uh, uh, firm 1 was in fact producing some output in equilibrium that is irrespective of that firm 2 always produces more output if its cost of production declines. As a result total output tends to rise and as total output tends to rise total uh, the, the market price that tends to fall. So, this is the overall conclusion of this uh, model where cost of production <coughs> differs. And, uh, what is basically happening here is uh, one may ask that if firm 2 is producing more output because its, its cost of production is declining, why is it the case that firm 1 is producing less output? Well, the answer is that as firm 1 as firm 2 is producing more output, <coughs> the in the market the supply is going up. As the supply is going up in the market the price is going down. And as the price is going down, the firm one is getting more and more discouraged to produce any output. So, that is why Q1 star is going down when uh, C2 is declining. So, that is basically the logic which is in operation here. Uh, so, this is the crux of the Kuno model. <coughs> how one firm behaves, how much output one firm produces that affects the other firm's production level. Uh, the, the logic is th this, if one firm produces more output in the market the supply rises, if the supply rises then the market clearing price will have to go down. And if the market clearing price goes down, then the other firm finds it difficult to sustain the same level of output, it then cuts down its output. And this is what exactly what is happening if the more efficient firm that is firm 2 is producing more output because cost of production has gone down, uh, the first firm is getting sh shut out from the market. And we have seen that in uh, case 2 that is this case <coughs> firm 1 is producing nothing. And uh, remember this condition 
uh, what this condition is basically saying is the following this is alpha minus c1 is this can be alternatively written as So, this, this condition translates to this that 2 c 1 is greater than equal to alpha plus c 2 which means that relative to c 1 c 2 is very little it is it is a small value which means that the cost of production of firm 2 is has become so less uh, alternatively the cost of production of firm 1 has relatively has become so high that uh, firm 1 is not finding it profitable to produce in the market only firm 2 is producing in the market. So, that is uh, the logic of it all. <clears throat> now, one more interesting property of Kuno equilibrium is that it is a case of prisoner's dilemma. Uh, we are going to show that in terms of an illustration. Uh, suppose that instead of competing with each other, these two firms collude. What it means is that these two firms instead of uh, fixing their output separately and trying to maximize their individual profit taking the quantity of the other firm to be given suppose they decide that let us meet together and let us decide what the total output in the market is going to be what is the total supply in the market going to be uh, because we have the control over the total supply in the market so, let us decide what is the total supply in the market going to be which is going to maximize the total profit and once the total profit is maximized we can divide that total profit equally. So, that can be an alternative way instead of fighting with each other. Now, so that is called a collusion. <coughs> which means that the firms are taking their decision united in an united fashion. So, what happens then? Uh, so, what the firms are deciding now is to maximize how to maximize that is pi 1 plus pi 2 the total profit let us call it pi that is what they are maximizing. Now, what is pi 1 plus pi 2? It is q 1 p minus C q 1 we are retaining the old assumptions that is the unit cost of production of both the firms uh, is equal and we have this simple linear uh, demand function. So, uh, profit the total profit the united profit is let us call q 1 plus q 2 as capital Q now. So, what the firms will now do is to maximize pi with respect to capital Q instead of bothering about uh, you know individual profits and maximizing the individual profits with respect to the small q's. And if it does so what we get is the following this is alpha minus q 
multiplied by q mul minus this and uh, what is the solution alpha minus q this is the first order condition minus q minus c is equal to 0 which means that 2 q is equal to alpha minus c capital q is equal to alpha minus c divided by 2. So, this is the first order condition we can check that the second order conditions will be satisfied because if I differentiate this with respect to q once more uh, I get minus 2 which is negative. So, the second order condition is satisfied. So, this is going to be the total output if the firms decide to maximize their joint profit, their united profit. So, individual output level will be half of this what about individual profit individual profit will be half of the total profit right half of total profit what is the total profit here total profit is uh, p q minus c q which is uh, So, this is the total profit which means that the individual profit that is it is going to be half of that which means alpha minus c whole square divided by 8. So, this is uh, let us stop here. Uh, so, this is the case where the firms dis unitedly decide how much they produce they will produce and we have seen that the output they are going to produce is alpha minus c divided by 2 and uh, the profits that they earn is alpha minus c whole square divided by 8. Before we finish just uh, just to recapitulate what we have done. We have basically di discussed the various aspects of Kuhn-O equilibrium, Kuhn oligopoly model. We have seen that in equilibrium the firms produce the same level of output and uh, if one of the firms is more efficient then that firm produces more output than the other firm which is not very surprising. And if that firms become too much efficient then the other firm uh, may be out of the market this more efficient firm becomes the monopolist. And we are in the process of discussing what happens if the firms uh, decide their output levels united in an united, united fashion. So, we shall pick up the thread from here in the next lecture. Thank you. Uh, first question if there is an exogenous rise in demand for goods what are the effects on individual output profit and market price in Kuhn equilibrium and what is the rationale. Now, to understand this let us recall what is the equilibrium in the Kuhn model. So, if we have the standard assumption that linear demand curve and constant unit cost, uh, then we know that individual price is going to individual quantity is going to be alpha minus c divided by 3. The equilibrium price is going to be one third of alpha plus 2 c and profit is going to be individual profit alpha minus c whole square divided by 9. Now, if there is an exogenous rise in demand.
this basically means alpha is going up because demand function if you remember was q d is equal to alpha minus p. So, alpha rising means the demand curve is shifting upwards. Now, we can see that as alpha rises q 1 star is going to rise p star is going to rise pi i star is going to rise and what is the reason why what why is it happening what is the rationale well uh, as alpha rises there is an exogenous shock upward shock on the demand people are ready to buy more if they are ready to buy more obviously in the market price is going to rise and as price goes to uh, is rising uh, the firms find that their uh, profits are rising and when the profits are rising they are going to respond by raising quantity the amount of output that they produce that is why q i star rises as a result. how change in production technology affects equilibrium variables what is the rationale. So, this is a similar question uh, production technology how is it reflected in this particular model. Now, if production technology becomes more improved, if it improves then if uh, then uh, simplistically very simplistically we can say that the cost of production is going to come down. Cost of production which is small c is going to decline. So, this change in technology is basically manifesting itself in terms of change in c. Now, how does it affect our variables? Uh, let us again recall what is the quantum of each of the variables. So, this is how the variables look like. Now, unlike before here if c declines then it the effect on each of these variables is not in the same direction as c declines we can see that p star is going to decline as cost of production declines each of the firms find it easy to reduce the price a little bit. Uh, and it is not the case, case that they are controlling the prices, but what is actually happening is that as the cost of production declining uh, then they want to produce more okay, uh, because it is possible for them to profitably produce more if when the cost is declining to maximize the profit. So, basically what is happening is that q i star is going to rise and that rise in the q i star is basically raising the total supply in the market and reducing the price in the market and pi i star is rising because cost is decreasing. Okay, that is the intuition. Thank you.